The next five minutes will show you scenes from the 55 minute video for the McGregor 26. The video shows just about everything there is to know about this remarkable boat. You'll see all of the reasons why the McGregor 26 is the world's best selling cruising sailboat. I hope you like what you see. This boat is one of the fastest, safest, and best handling of any of the tradable cruising sailboats. It's a very easy boat to learn to sail. Here we have a very fast cabin cruiser. A 50 horsepower outboard gives you more than 20 miles per hour. Try this with any other sailboat. It's not the fastest ski boat in the world, and you'll never be able to pull a crowd, but you can have an awful lot of fun. Unlike most waterbound sailboats that are limited to their local waters, these boats can easily be trailered to any lake, river, or ocean. The boat sits low on its trailer, lower than its competitors. It can be floated off the trailer without drowning your car. With the boat in the water, a valve is opened and it takes on 1,150 pounds of water ballast. This provides the self-riding stability that the boat requires for sailing. This is the mast raising system. It's so easy a kid can do it. Rigging and launching the boat takes less than 10 minutes. This is as simple as it looks. The ballast is drained to keep the boat light for easy trailering. The boat will float in 12 inches of water and you can run it right up on the beach. The cozy weather tight cabin provides two large double berths and two singles. The rear berth is as large as a queen size bed. There's a fully enclosed head just forward of the mirrored bulkhead. You have to spend a lot more money to find these accommodations in a power boat. Notice the large rear berth. This is the hull with the deck removed, so you can see the berths, the galley, the dinette, and the head. The big galley slides back under the cockpit seats to make lots of seating room in the main cabin. This is the big rear berth with lots of headroom. The dinette table lowers to make a very large single berth. Fully enclosed head, an absolute necessity for any voyage lasting more than a few hours. For privacy, it has a good solid door. The mast rotates, as it does on many catamarans, to align with the mainsail. This greatly increases the mainsail's power. Here we see the boat sailing with its big Genoa jib in a brisk 20 mile an hour wind. This is the smaller working jib. This is the cruising spinnaker. It's colorful and fun to fly. When sailing downwind or across the wind, it adds a lot of speed. The much larger racing spinnaker provides even more downwind power. When it blows hard, or when you're feeling lazy, you need less sail. Here it's sailing with just the mainsail. Here the Genoa is rolled in on its furler, and the main is reefed. This is for really heavy winds. We pulled the boat over with the ballast tank full. It takes 130 pounds at the top of the mast to hold it down like this. When the mast is released, the boat rights itself. We drilled a big hole in the bottom and let it fill. The solid foam flotation keeps it afloat. It won't sail fast this way, but it beats swimming. We build this boat in one of the most modern and efficient plants in the industry. Here are the fiberglass pieces that make up the 26. A finished boat is being pulled from this mold. Notice the molded in accent stripes. After all the hardware is installed on the hull and deck, the two finished parts are joined. A completed boat rolls off the assembly line every four hours. We've built over 35,000 sailboats over the last 37 years. These boats represent only a few days production. We'll finish this introduction with a few pleasant scenes that give you an idea what the McGregor 26 is all about.
I'm Roger McGregor, and I'll take you through the next 50 minutes showing you everything about our 26. You'll see lots of sailing, powering, water skiing, launching, and rigging. I'll show you in detail how we designed the boat and how they're built. Because of the water ballast system which we developed and which is now the standard throughout the industry, the trailering weight can be kept low, allowing the 26 to be trailered by standard cars. The empty boat weighs only 2,250 pounds. The trailer weighs 710. The boat's width is just under 8 feet and it can be legally trailered throughout the United States without permits. Permits are frequently required for widths over 8 feet and always required for loads over 8 foot 6 inches. Watch how easy this is. The boat sits low on its trailer, making launching very simple. The bow tie is released, the skipper starts the motor and backs the boat off the trailer. The boat's quite happy with all of this. This is the typical ramp. Everybody stays dry and the car stays out of the water. Every inch higher a boat sits on its trailer means that the car has to go one foot further down the ramp. Thirty inches. These are Catalina 22s. Thirty-six and a half inches. This is 125. Fifty-six inches. These are Catalina 25s with their retracting keels. Forty-seven inches. This is 123. It's 33 inches to the scribed water line and to the little scum line where it's been sitting in the water. 126 measures 36 inches. Here's 123. Look how far the end of the water the car had to go. This poor soul cranked ferociously for an eternity. He'll be getting tired. Extension tongues are frequently used, as for this Catalina 22. Ramps are designed for normal length traders, and one of these long ones goes off the paved part. Major outside help is often needed. Or you can always just wait in there. If you listen really carefully, you can hear the dishes breaking. As the boat powers onto the trader, watch how the trader's rear goal posts, seen here sticking out of the water, keep the boat centered and aligned. Some traders don't have these. Without the posts, things can get a little screwed up. See the wide V at the nose of the trader? It's a big target and easy to hit. It's padded and you can plow into it pretty hard. Without it, it's pretty easy to slide right past and punch out your car. With the 26, you simply drive on and go forward to tie off the nose. Go down the ladder and stay out of the water. Without the ladder, securing the boat can be fun for the spectators. The boat's light and can easily be pulled up the ramp and out of the water. If the boat's too heavy, you'll get a lot of this. If the designer had given this rig another couple of inches, this skipper's life would have been improved immensely. When you pull a 26, our engine clears the ground in the down position. To sail like this, you need ballast to keep the boat upright. With the boat in the water, a valve's opened, and the ballast tank fills with 1,150 pounds of water. The water ballast nearly half the weight of the boat substitutes for the fixed lead or cast iron keels found in other sailboats. This is the water ballast valve. When you launch the boat, the valve is opened and the water tank fills. Gravity does the work. When you retrieve the boat, drain the tank to lighten it, lighten it for trailering. Now we'll talk about raising the mast. First disconnect it from the valve pulpit and roll the mast base to the rear and slide the hinge pin in place. 